currently I'm trying to get this RC car to try to do over 150 miles an hour but although I've made many brilliant modifications to it it is proving to be quite difficult so let's head back a few months to the first round of Rossa 2024 enjoy the event and see where we're going wrong here we go guys at the Airbnb look at that absolutely gorgeous we've got this lovely view of the sea in the morning and when we come home Look at that, guys. This is lovely. No, you've got to see and try and go. How quick is it meant to be? I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking to do 150. One, I don't know. 120, 130. But it's just a takeoff. When he takes it off, he's like, Phew! he's like, what? <laughs> So Kev's room is in here, Andy's one is up there, my room is in here, look at this guys. Oh god, Kev with a helicopter indoors. Watch out. Watch out, Dad. Oh, oh! 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 I knew that was coming. What? He just landed it on the roof. <laughs> Oh, you see, look at that. I tell you what, that is impressive. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. oh. First morning of Rossa, absolutely gorgeous weather today. So here we are on the runway, and here we've got Nick going in for his second run of the day. He's just done 176 miles an hour. Here he comes. That's quick, guys. Whoa! So here we've got our station at the moment, as you can see, quite a mess. We're just getting all the batteries charged up. Here's Andy's station. This is the car he's planning to do 200 miles an hour with. Here's the RC man station. So he's got a 1S car down here and then also a 6S one over here. 2S, look at the motors. 2S? Oh, look at the motors. Oh my God. <laughs> and guys, in case you didn't know, this is the man that made the chassis for that car. So guys, massive shout That's out to RC man. Link in the description to his channel. <laughs> Whoa! Well controls! 169.40 This here is a serious car. Look at that full carbon fiber streamline. Look at this. This is an absolutely gorgeous car. How fast do you reckon you're gonna get today? Like 170, 180 on the Yeah. And then new buttons. I like this idea as well, having the bigger wheels at the back. Yeah. Here, it's like much better than smaller wheels. Oh, well, good luck. I can't see it runs. There we go. That's better. Much better. Whoa! Nice. Whoa! <laughs> We've got Nick going in for another run. Whoa! Oh, no. Whoa. That's quick. 179, that's good for a single. So here we've got Rob's car on 1S. There we go! She's going now! 91. What's going on? You got 94 before, no? Yeah. Back to the drawing board. Nice. Sorry? seven. Sorry? One at seven four point. Alex! <laughs> Guys, that is astonishing. Four S and 174. That's crazy. So here we've got Rob's dual 2S car. Oh dear. 117. <laughs> What's going on? Nice! 177. Here we go, day two on the runway. So this car's gonna be the main focus of today, guys. Yesterday we got the 150 cap with the VTE2, so today I'd like to get 100 miles an hour with this car. This is gonna be the first run of the day for us. Kev, you over here is getting his speed sausage, Reggie. It's gonna be his yeah. first runs today. Uh, here we go, here's a problem with the pinion that's on the diff output. It's come loose, look. So we might actually be able to give the car another run. We'll get a little bit of Loctite on here 
and then we'll go for another run. Front diff is absolutely perfect. We definitely need to sort out the trim. Now, that was pulling so hard to the right, so when we tried to recover it, it just span out in circles. So, yep, a few little amendments, and then we'll go for another run. Here we go. We've got the antenna sticking at the top now. We ran out of range really quickly on the runway, and this controller has a lot more range than that, so probably should switch it off. I reckon this PLA here is just too thick to transmit the signal. So we've got it poking out the top now, so hopefully we'll get a bit more range. So here we've got John's car here, and he's actually running the same setup as me, the XLX2 and the Leopard Hobby Motor. How fast did you just get with it? I did a sort of like a sort of practice run, and had plenty of power, I could have done 142. 142. Yeah, I think there's plenty more power in it. Look, he's got the same packs as me as well. I think maybe get 150 today, hopefully. Definitely. Nick going in for a run. Nice. We've got Andy potentially going for a 200 mile an hour run. Yep, that's it. Yes, my three. So here we've got Kev's car. This is the one we've got two motors straight to the diffs. 12S in there. How do you think it's going to go? Well, we had 173 out of it. Supposed to do 203, really, was the goal. Another day, we can play with the diff ratios, try and gear it up a little bit. Well, I think it's got the yeah. power for 200, maybe. Uh, I don't Find out remaining 30 mile an hour. Who, Who knows? knows? Yeah. It gets exponentially more difficult every mile an hour. Got Rob going in for another run on a single motor. Did 180 on the last run on a single. <gasps> Holy cow. 175.5, Ah, uh, guys, shredded rear diff, so new rear diff in there, and we'll go again. Front diff is done as well. We've done both the front and rear diffs in this car. That's probably what's been the issue. Here we've got Scorch Dave. He's got a quad motor animal. This is potentially a world record car here. Hey. Oh, 216. 217. 217. Yeah, we've got up. Look at the tyres on oh, this. Man, all the tyres gone. Every single one. Yeah, Russell World Record that. Yeah, yes. 224 on the oh, GPS. Shit. 224. 224. Alright, so I've redone all the diffs, guys. I've shimmed it all up, but it's too tight now, and there are rough spots here and rough spots there. So I think we're just going to put this car aside. We've only got literally a couple hours left on the runway here, so we'll. We'll put this one aside, we can take this back home, get it fixed, and then, well, just figure out what's wrong with it. So we're back home, and that was a bit of a disappointment, wasn't it? So it's become pretty clear that the diffs and the transmission of this car have become the weak point. So Kev did suggest that it would be a good idea to put this design onto a different platform, like a Herbay or something, but I've had another idea. Kev's suggestion will definitely be the easiest way forwards, but... If the diffs are the only real problem at the moment, then all we need to do is change the diffs. If we need bigger diffs, we need bigger bulkheads. And that gave me a brainwave. So this car we saw at the event has done 186 miles an hour on 4S. This is insane. This car is a piece of engineering genius. It's fully homemade, fully custom done. But what really stands out to me about it is that it's rear-wheel drive. And a rear-wheel drive car is going to be much simpler and more reliable since it's half as many diffs to go wrong. So that got me thinking, what if I just make this car again, but have it rear wheel drive and in the process make some of my own parts? I've already got a spare carbon chassis and a spare body shell, so now I've modelled the entire car in 3D here. So this is SketchUp if you guys are interested. And I've made custom bulkheads for the bigger diffs. I've made new servo mounts, so then all of this stuff lines up with the existing holes on the chassis. But basically now, this entire car is 3D printable. You may have noticed I'm now going to be using 8th scale wheels on the back of the car, so I've slightly adjusted the shape of the body shell. Don't worry, we're not completely giving up on the existing design, we'll just come back to that in another video, because in this video, we're going to get this car all built up, and then we're going to take it to round 3 of Rossa 2024. Currently, our new rear bulkhead is still printing, there's only a few hours left to go on that, but in the meantime, let's start to get some of the new parts on the chassis. So as you can see, I've tried to experiment with some little 3D printed front hubs, but I just don't think that this is all going to be substantial enough. I think the wheels are going to wobble all over the shot. So what I'm going to do instead is just use the standard FTX Banzai front hubs. So I need to find a link to join the servo arm up to this hub here. The ones I've got are either a little bit too short or a little bit too long. So in the meantime, let's get some stuff stuck on the chassis. Oops. 
So we've only got a few more hours on the shell and in the meantime, I've managed to find this link here off a T-Rex 4 that works about perfectly. So here we go, the rear bulkhead is now finished, as you can see, bearings all around. This one here is just the final prototype, so it's still a bit rough on a few edges, but here is the final version, nice and finished, and as you can see, it's fully equipped with bearings. So then when we spin the crown wheel, it's lovely and smooth, and we've got perfect mesh. And now, let's get this on the back of the car. So now it's time to fit the motor and instead of running two motors, I'm going to be running one bigger motor. This is the Traxxas 2400 kV motor that you'll find in the Max and I'm hooking it up to this Hobbywing Max ATSC. Now this does sound like a bit of a downgrade compared to running two motors in the previous version of the car but one motor should be enough just to see if this concept works and then after that we'll modify it so we can run two. Okay, so the wheels are now on the car. I'm sorry I didn't film it. So in the meantime, let me just quickly explain to you how this whole rear assembly works. So what I've decided to do is just run one solid axle all the way through the bulkhead. And then the spool here, which in case you're interested is out of an armor typhon and like the wheel hubs, they just bolt directly onto that rear axle. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this ESC bound up. And then after that, we're gonna fit the body shell because once we've done that, we're gonna take this car out for a test and make sure it works. So to make sure that the ESC has plenty of power i'm still going to be running two 4s packs but we're going to be running them in parallel so then technically it is still a 4s car so by the looks of it something's going the wrong way around so swap over a couple of these cables well it works brilliant so far, it's looking like a great success. In terms of how we're gonna get this body shell to fit nicely on the car, I've got four screws on the back here straight into the rear bulkhead to keep the back nice and secure. And then at the front, I've got two holes in the front bulkhead because I've just gone ahead and designed and 3D printed this little front body mount here. <laughs> So that's the body on. As you can see, it's more secure than it's ever been. All rolls perfectly smoothly. So that is the latest and hopefully greatest version of the car complete. So now let's get out for a quick test run. And here we are at the Airbnb. And by the looks of it, the chickens seem quite interested by the speed cars. And here we are on the runway at Rossa. So I did some little tests off of camera. All is good so far. So I just need to set the trim up, make sure that everything is working perfectly. And then we can do a proper run. Guys, it actually works and it's so smooth. Oh yes. That is absolutely perfect. That's just what I wanted to see. So now guys, let's get it in the queue and go for a run. What on earth? <laughs> hey boy. It's a speed run Raminator. Yeah. Well, actually, it's a speed run game over truck converted to the yes mate truck. Carbon fiber chassis underneath there. Oh my God. Yeah. Go-kart wheels, go-kart adapters, Max 4, TP5870. In case this looks like I've slightly lost the plot here with where the car's going, it's just run out of range and it's doing its own thing. Okay, so what was going on there is we were having range issues. I think the moment we get more than about 20 meters away from us, we lose signal and that's just not gonna be okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a new receiver in there and after that we'll go for another run. I've got high hopes for this because it's running perfectly. It's super quick as well. So unfortunately, this runway is quite rough, as you can see by the way this car is bouncing up and down here, so that probably made everything shake itself loose a bit. Oh. Now what happened? Uh, by the looks of it, we lost drive, so let's get the car and see what happens. Okay, so quite a bit has come loose, so the pinion came loose here, and the diff has slid along the shaft there, so 
it's not making contact with the dip pinion. So we'll get a few little bits tightened up and then hopefully we should be able to go again. Here he goes as Ventus with his carbon fiber car, the inspiration for this build. Oh my God. Oh my God. One, nine, four, four. Eight, eight. One seven three point nine three. Carbon car again. Here he comes. <gasps> no. You know what? I think that Ramo was just a little bit too rough for that car, which is a shame because I really think that this design is a big improvement over the previous version. It was so much more controllable and so much more stable. I think the air on the back and the big wheels really helps kind of keep the car planted and pulling in a straight line and the transmission was so much smoother. Nothing exploded, you know, all the teeth didn't shatter. So on that front, I'm really pleased. I'd consider this concept a massive win, but obviously I think the roughness of the runway did cause the rear diff to kind of fall apart a bit. So because of that, I decided not to rebuild the car again to go for another run on the runway. I thought it'd just shake itself to pieces again and i also got a little bit distracted by the vte2 and speaking of the vte2 you know how we put that new tp motor in it we've now got this 150 mile an hour proven leopard hobby motor and i know what you're thinking and i'm thinking the same thing and yep that is exactly what we're going to be doing this motor is going into this car here we're going to get an xlx2 ordered up for it we're going to slam the onyx batteries in here and guys one way or another this will become a 150 mile an hour car this new design definitely will work for it and the electrics definitely have the power for it so we will be fitting those electrics but in the next video we're going to consider this part one of the new version of the build as this video is getting too long already and it is well overdue for you guys so what i'm going to do now is get on with starting part two of the build because guys let me tell you we're getting this car to 150 miles an hour and nothing is going to stop me